Hi guys, welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. We're in the home garden. We're going to be in the home garden for the next little while. And today is kind of going to be a like prep-ish video where we're going to get some of the larger anchor plants in my hoard in the ground. I have a large hoard. I'm actually going to go look at it in a moment and bring you with me. And I want to inspect how many plants exactly there are. In it, I have picked up a couple shrubs, or I've brought some shrubs with me from my um, old house. Last year, I moved into this property, and I brought a ton of things with me, a lot of which kind of languished a little bit over the summer. It's fall. It's a great time to get them planted, and I'm looking at some of those larger pieces and getting them into a back area of my garden where we spent a lot of time this year doing some big changes. Most notably, we removed three massive hemlocks to create some sun. We also planted three trees and it was it's an area that I'm not gonna be developing a ton this year, but I do wanna get these anchor plants in the ground and growing on so that they can start being established. And when we focus on this next year or the year after, whenever we get to it, because there's lots of areas to focus on, they're gonna be there and ready to get going. So I need to go take a look and assess my hoard and then I'm going to start working on those. I suspect this is going to be a hard task because it's an area where those trees used to be. And I know I'm going to run into quite a lot of roots. So let's go take a look at the hoard and I'll show you where the area is itself. Okay, this is the area I'm going to be working in. I actually came in and mowed around things um, already. So it's looking nice and neat. We have three Atlas roses planted in here. We have a weeping Alaskan cedar a crabapple tree, I want to call it a Donald Wyman, and then we have a Sengukaku Japanese maple that we added. It's right next to the vegetable garden, which the marigolds did way better this year than I thought. Unfortunately, I'm going to be removing them soon because they're getting hard to access the plants that are in there. And we did plant some row crops of zinnias and other cut flowers already this year. So this is an area that's going to be mostly bed in the future. Um, and I have a couple big things that I want to stick over there. You can already see there's a forsythia. I've got an azalea. And I have to do some looking around in my plant hoard. I actually want to count things really quick. Hold on. Okay, I have 127 plants in pots in my plant hoard. This is not counting anything that I have in the ground in these two rows, which is probably another like 60 plants. Just very condensed, but... If I look at everything, there's some big things that I know are going in this area and some things I'm considering going in this area. And I think I need to kind of pull together, decide what's going where, and start getting them in the ground. I also have an azalea here that I was thinking about moving into this area, but I could also put it at the front of the house. It's got to move from its spot. I just need to think on where I want it a little bit more. So I'm going to get you set up. I'm going to move some stuff around and look at spacing, assess the big sun stuff, and then show you what I'm thinking and whether that's going to move or not. So let's get started.
I got everything planted. I got lucky. There wasn't a ton of roots, but it just takes a long time. And I really actually got quite lucky because two of the places where I put it was putting these things were very close to previous tree root balls. Let's take a look at the different varieties and where I put them and why. I don't know if you could tell where we were, but over in this back corner, kind of behind this oak leaf hydrangea and the weeping Alaskan cedar, I put in a variegated dogwood. Here it is. I got quite the deal on it. It's just, you know, a pretty run-of-the-mill variegated dogwood, but it has beautiful red stems. I had some of these in my previous yard. They were too big and old to move, but I absolutely loved using these in flower arrangements as greenery. And I thought for five bucks, even though it's looking kind of sad, I would give it a try and see if it would take this place. Now, these guys can do full sun to part shade. They'll, if they love their spot, they're gonna get six to 10 feet tall and four to six feet wide. And there are zones three through seven. So I thought that this would fill this little corner nicely. The weeping Alaskan cedar can get eight to 12 wide. So I think eventually they could just barely touch but that's if both of them reach their largest potential. We also over here have a ice crystal oak leaf hydrangea that will get three to six wide and five to six tall. So there will be a walkway through them and this could fill up nicely, but this will provide a pop of like bright white variegated foliage back here in the spring, summer and autumn. And in the winter, it'll contrast nicely with the fence with its bright red leaves. Speaking of the ice crystal oak leaf hydrangea, I planted another one here. Now, if you remember, I can't remember if I said it in this video or a different one, but the first things I planted when I moved here was actually five of these oak leaf hydrangeas. And that was before we took out the uh, hemlock trees that were here. So it was a deep shade place. When we took them out, we had to move three of them. Um, and slowly I've been adding them back into the yard. So this is one of them. And ironically, it's not too far. It used to be here. And, well, it wasn't a pot, but, uh, but when I took it out of the pot so it didn't get damaged, and I just pumped it back here. We do have um, trunks left. I didn't get them taken out. It was going to be difficult to get the equipment in the backyard, and I'm going to be planting this so thickly, I'm not going to see these. So I decided just to leave them. On this one, I did not run into a single root, so I'm just thrilled with how that went in. In front of it, we have a hibiscus. Now this one is very cool. It is a watermelon ruffles hibiscus. And look at that beautiful flower. It's uh, four to five tall and wide in zones four through nine. And uh, the other thing I liked about it is it had really dark foliage with super heavy lobes. So I thought it would provide a pop, even though there's some Similar texture in the oak leaf, it's going to be a different color and it will provide a really nice backdrop for these Atlas roses, which will get about three feet tall and wide. There'll be some really pretty layering in here once they start taking off. Now, being watered in is a little quick fire hydrangea. We planted one of these in the big sunbed that we worked in recently. This one is part shade to full sun. So it's three through eight and it's gonna get three feet tall and wide. So I thought that would provide a really pretty pop there. It's kind of hard to see right now with the sun and the water. And the sail sticker is kind of blocking what it looks like. But it's one of my favorite hydrangeas. Behind it, and you can kind of barely see it, we have a forsythia that actually came from my parents' house. I don't know what variety it is, but in general, forsythias will get five to six feet tall, five to six feet wide if they like their area. And in my mind, they're kind of blah plants, except in the spring when they are the very first thing to bloom and I love them. I will notice them in everybody's yards and think, gosh, I really need to get one. So when my parents had one that they had removed for some reason or another and didn't have another spot for it, I grabbed it. And I've been meaning to plant it here all summer. I thought it would be a really great thing to put right along the fence line because in the spring it will be the first thing in this area that's blooming. So when it's yellow and bright and beautiful, it's just going to be a showstopper. 
And then, when it's just green leaves, we've got a really interesting Japanese maple, we've got this hydrangea, we've got these roses, so many other things that are going to take over and be interesting. And it can just be a leaf canopy breaking up the back fence line. So that is going to do it for this video. I got five plants towards my goal of 50% of my plant hoard. I can't remember how many. I'll have to go back and watch the video, but I think it was like 120-ish. So there's a ways to go. My goal is to get about 60 to 75 of the potted plants planted. Now these were really big wins because they are anchor plants in areas that I'm not going to be planting a lot of stuff this year, but they, I knew they were going to take a long time to get in the ground because of where they were being planted. So even though it's not a huge number, I still feel like it's making progress towards my goal and starting to build those layers in an area that I'm excited to build over the next couple years. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Share this with your gardening friends that you think might enjoy this video and check back. Next Saturday, we're going to be back in the home garden working in another area of the garden. We're going to pull out my favorite cardboard mulching method and get some shade plants from the plant hoard in the ground. You won't want to miss that, so make sure to check back. I really appreciate you joining me today, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye.